What's going on everybody? My name is Aiden and welcome back to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you a quick update on the Chicago Bulls injury list as well as discussing a little bit about Chicago Bulls weekly. This is technically a Chicago Bulls weekly episode where we dive into the previous week, discuss the week, discuss the rewards and discuss the upcoming week for the Bulls as well. This is going to be in a rush format. I'm going to be rushing through this so hopefully you guys will enjoy that. But before we get any further, if you like the video and you want to see more from me, drop a like, drop a follow, and or subscribe if you are new, and let me know in the comments below your thoughts about the Chicago Bulls, their injury update, as well as the upcoming week ahead for the Chicago Bulls. So, let's get started. Alex Caruso is listed as questionable to play against the Philadelphia 76ers. I'm assuming this is the same reason that he was questionable the last couple of games. He got hurt in one of those games. Unfortunately, uh, it just seems like He's not really 100% ready to come back. Again, I'd like to see him play. I think he's a phenomenal player when he does play. I think he makes a big difference to this team. We'll just have to wait and see whether or not the Bulls are comfortable with him ba being back on the floor. Toy Craig, unfortunately, is listed as doubtful to play against the 76ers. Now, doubtful is a 75% chance he may miss this game compared to the 25% chance he may play. That's a rough estimate of the percentages. Uh, uh, unfortunate to see for Toy Craig as well, in all, in all fairness. Um, again, he had a phenomenal game uh, against the Miami Heat, and I feel like he was a big miss in that second half. And again, I'm not putting all the excuses on two players or one player as to why we lost the game, but the guy dropped 16 points and a half. I really felt like he could have did he could have made a big difference against that Miami Heat uh, team, but it is what it is. We'll wait and see how that goes in the future. And that seems to be the injury updates for the Chicago Bulls. Let's get that out of the way. And now let's dive into the Chicago Bulls weekly. So... This week, we I believe we had four games to look forward to, and we ended up going one and three. Now, you might look at that and say, wow, that's a pretty bad week for the Bulls. One and three, that's not good enough. At least try to go two and two, try to go that neutral record and stuff of that nature, but we ended up going one and three. But I'll tell you what, even in the one and three performances, I'm still fairly happy with this Chicago Bulls team for a variety of reasons. Number one, most of those games were close and competitive. Most of those games we showed the heart and spirit. And most of those games we still played the way that we wanted to play. Yeah, there are going to be some teams that are better than us. Yeah, there's going to be some teams that beat us. Yeah, we might lose some buzzer beat. We might lose to a buzzer beater every now and then. That's the NBA. Um, again, if you're expected to go through every game and not lose games, I'm sorry. Especially with how young this Bulls team is starting to look without Zach Levine. Um, I know DeMar DeRozan and Vucevic are still playing, but you know we're relying a lot on guys like Kobe, Io, and Pat. And these are our youngsters. These are our guys that we need to develop into the next, I guess, the next thing for the Chicago Bulls, the, the, the core pieces for our future. We're trying to develop these guys. So every now and then, the inconsistency is going to come and, and the bad performances are going to come and the losses are going to come. But this is all a learning experience. So our first game was against the Milwaukee Bucks. And this is unfortunately where we ended up losing our um, four-game winning streak. We lost this game 133 to 129 in an absolute overtime thriller. Now again, 133 to 129. The Bucks had a very strong team in this game. And the Bulls still played with their heart and passion and did not make it easy whatsoever for the Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah, we made some mistakes in the fourth quarter. I think a lot of people f probably felt like we should have won that game. But when it was all said and done, the Bulls provided a massive effort away from home against a team that a lot of people consider a championship contending team. And we made them look tired. They looked exhausted by the end of that game. We brought a fight to them that they simply were, they were ready for because they won the game. But I don't think they're necessarily expected. But to be fair, we did beat them with this very similar team at home. So maybe they did expect this. But again... A great, great performance from the Chicago Bulls, even in defeat. Then the next game, a back-to-back -back against the Denver Nuggets, and we lost this game 114 to 106. This, in my opinion, is the biggest disappointing game of the week. 114 to 106. Um, they lost Nikola Jokic, which I thought was an absolute disaster in the second half of that game. Um, no Jamal Murray coming into that game as well for Denver. And they lost Cardwell Pope in the second half as well, I believe. So, yeah, all the way around, a very weakened Denver team. But the way that they played is how a championship team does play. They managed the game phenomenally well. It was so frustrating how well they managed the game. Guys stepped up in other people's places. And it just felt like a very connected team 
that knew where everybody was supposed to be, that knew how they were going to play, knew how they were going to get the job done, and just managed that game out tremendously well. And that is a game where I look at, and Denver didn't play amazing basketball, and neither did the Bulls. But that's the type of game where I'm thinking, okay, the Chicago Bulls need to take notes from a team like Denver so we can start applying that type of managing game management in the future because I still think that's a great area for the Chicago Bulls where we don't always get it down right. But anyway, it is what it is. The next game against the Miami Heat was an absolutely amazing game and we won this game 124 to 116. An absolutely tremendously good game positive offensive game for the Chicago Bulls. We started this game hot and we never really looked back since. Miami came back in the game. Of course, they made it close to competitive because that's the type of team that they are. You're very rarely going to get a blowout win against the Miami Heat. But we did a heck of a job in this game. We walked away with a great win as well away from home. But then the next game against Miami, again, a solid game from the Chicago Bulls. But we lost to a former Chicago Bulls player, one of our better Chicago Bulls players in recent history, Jimmy Butler. The G stands for gets because Jimmy got the bucket to seal the victory for Miami. And we set, they, set my, they set the Bulls, I guess, to Philly on a loss. So, again... We tied the series in series with Miami, but that was a great game with a very, very, very interesting finish. And I'm proud of Bulls fans for still giving the love and respect to Jimmy Butler, even though I feel like a lot of people could have lost their heads um, and, you know, started to boo or start to, you know, abuse a guy that has done a lot for this organization with his time here. I'm glad that we didn't see many people do that. And again, congratulations to Jimmy Butler. It is what it is. We take the loss and we move on. Still very proud of the Chicago Bulls team. Now to discuss the awards. Um, the must improve, sixth man of the week, defensive player of the week, and the player of the week in general. And this is a little bit more difficult considering the Chicago Bulls at the end of the day. Again, there was a lot of guys that came in and out of the lineup. Again, Toy Craig got hurt, Caruso got hurt. This is going to be a tough one to do. So let's get started. The must improve is very hard to me for me to give because, simply put, I don't necessarily know. It's like inconsistency. I feel like the guy that I'm going to target is Javon Carter, unfortunately, but the guy doesn't get a whole lot of responsibility, I guess, opportunity to play. So it's, I feel like that's an easy target there. But I guess in the minutes that Javon Carter has played, I can understand why he doesn't play a whole lot of minutes these days for the Chicago Bulls. When he's playing phenomenally well and he's making his threes, he's obviously a very valuable piece to the Bulls. But when he doesn't make his threes, he does kind of feel like a little bit of a liability out there. So... That's my must improve. My sixth man of the week, I feel like this is also difficult to give, but I feel like Troy Craig is the answer here. Again, I think Io for, you know, the small minutes that he played off the bench could be a contender, but I think Troy Craig is the option here. 16 points off the bench against um, against the Miami Heat is just phenomenal stuff, and I feel like he's done some decent things the whole way through. The player, the uh, defensive player of the week... That's going to go to Io. I truly believe Io is the, f the defensive player of the week. Io and Pat, those are the two guys I'm looking at. I'm saying, wow, they brought a massively strong defensive um, play. You know, Patrick Williams had to do some things on, on Giannis this week. Uh, he also had some big responsibilities on some big players. But I feel like Io as well. I, it's the small things with Io. It's the help defense that he provides. He seems to be at the right place at the right time always. Sometimes he's guarding bigger guys. Sometimes he's sm guarding smaller guys. But I feel like Io's not a vocal leader on the defensive end. But I think he has a very high defensive IQ. That's my my thought process on this. And that's why I'm going to give it to him. My player of the week is Kobe White. Again, a very good two-way performance for the entire week. Extends his um, three-point streak the entire week. Even in the last game against Miami when he struggled, he had a terrific fourth quarter to kind of um, save that game for himself and to bring the Bulls to a step closer towards winning that game. So I'd go for him in that instance. Now, what's coming up next? A couple of hours' time. We're going to be versing Philly. Philly's always a team that seems to be a bogey team for the Bulls. We very rarely beat the 76ers. Let's see if this time will be different. Then, a couple of days later, we've got a home game against the LA Lakers. I know a lot of people in, on this channel do not like the LA Lakers, so that's going to be an interesting bout. Then, a back-to-back -back situation as we take on the Spurs at home. A chance to see Victor Wenbenyama once again, which will be very, very interesting. 
And then the last game is going to be against Cleveland at home as well. So we've got a couple of home games throughout this week as well. Defend home court. Simple as that. What do you guys think? Thank you for watching. Drop a like and a follow. And or subscribe if you are new. I'm going to pick the Bulls to go 3-1. and one. I'm, I'm going to stay positive this week. Wonderful safe day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay tuned for more. Take care. And peace.